New announcements from President-elect Trump on this Thanksgiving Eve. Mr. Trump has chosen South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley to be America's ambassador to the U.N. He also picked Michigan businesswoman Betsy DeVos for education secretary. She's a charter school advocate. Haley and DeVos are the first two women to be tapped for key posts in his administration. There are also conflicting reports over Ben Carson today. Just a few minutes ago, Carson's spokesman said Trump has not offered Carson the post of Housing and Urban Development Secretary. Here's Dr. Carson talking about the potential position. Dr. Carson, now they're apparently interested in having you, if this is right, to be a HUD secretary. Would you be interested in that? Uh, well, you know, our inner cities are in terrible shape. and. Uh, they definitely need some real attention. You know, there have been so many promises made over the last several decades and nothing has been done. So it certainly is, is something that has been a long-term interest of mine. Has it been offered, sir? Uh, we have had offers, yes. And is it the HUD position? Uh, I would say that was one of the offers that's on the table. All right, and no further interviews. <laughs> Who's on first? Well, who's at HUD? No one knows. Typically, the problem is he does not like not telling the truth. So when you're asked directly by somebody you respect, you like Neil Cavuto, right. I'm sensing it happened, but he doesn't play the game. He's a surgeon that is a great person that got an offer, so he answered the question honestly. There is no place for honesty in politics. That's the problem we have here, Bowling. This, well, is, uh, yeah, this except, is the honesty game. Except there was reporting that not only was he offered the job, he accepted the job. Right. And then a couple minutes later on the way down, no, 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 hold on. He didn't accept. He was, not only did he not accept the job, he wasn't even offered it yet. But then there was it's like a Facebook really, post. It's really, really, it's right. And there was posts and whatnot and the reporting, reportage. But what we do know is Nikki Haley was, in fact, offered the, the job of, uh, of U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Early morning, I woke up to it, and I emailed Dana. I said, Dana, why would a successful, um, smart, well-respected governor of a South Carolina state, Republican and Republican, yeah. take a job as ambassador to the U.N.? She said, this is perfect. I'll let Dana explain why, but wow, that's a fantastic So it was Dana point. Perino. That was, was my Dana, Dana yeah. Perino <laughs> question. Yeah. Well, one thing I would say for Dr. Carson is that if you are up for a job, or anybody who is up for a job in the administration, uh, for the new administration, don't book yourself on television for, until it's settled, mm -hmm. because okay. you're going to get put in that position. And, Dr. Carson is not alone in not wanting to lie, I uh, would say. I just found out he's on the Kelly file tonight. <laughs> of course. Because <laughs> but what, what's likely is it's a done deal, but it's not. Not an ounce. Yeah. 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 Like you should just like, right? you should always let the president-elect make that announcement, not yourself. Right. Um, on Nikki well, Haley. four hours to figure that out before the Kelly file. <laughs> when I um, got Eric's email, I thought, well, I will respond this way. Um, I think she is a public servant at heart. She's um, had a long list of, pub of public service. She has probably not going to, she was not going to run again, I don't think, for governor of South Carolina. Um, she has an immigrant story, hmm. a successful family business in America. She, she showed her ability to be an amazing diplomat after the shooting at the AME Church in Charleston. Very much And so. she handled the Confederate flag issue in a way that pretty much everyone praised her yeah. at the end of that. So I think this is a really natural step for her. Um, she was not for Trump at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, she was for Marco Rubio, but she came around at the end and, and supported him. And I think that shows that, one, he respects her and thinks that she will be able to add to his foreign policy agenda, and there will be a lot of issues that she has to take care of right away. And First of all, it will be the refugee crisis mm -hmm. and how the administration decides to handle that and how different it might be from what um, President Obama had. And the other thing that will be just a major issue, because it always is at the UN, is climate change. Sure. And she'll be right in the middle of that. So I think it's a really great pick for her. Plus, if she has plans for a future run for higher office, oh, yeah. perfect. then foreign policy experience is something that she would need. It's a win-win for this her. Is, I think it's perfect. And if Pence didn't want to be VP after four, she would also be excellent in that. I mean, and I think you'll see a really good governor, governor's race in South Carolina, and you'll probably see somebody who's on the national stage now decide to run. Any predictions on that? I think it'll be Tim Scott. I love it when you answer those questions. <laughs> <laughs> all right, don't play hard to get, just answer. Yeah, Julie. Well, first of all, I'm going to be in the Kelly file, so I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Okay. Right. Right. You can investigate I'm, I'm going to investigate. I will report right back to you at okay. 9 o'clock tonight. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Um, look, I actually agree with you on Nikki Haley. I think it's a smart pick. What I like about it is that Trump, President-elect Trump, 
is not just surrounding himself with sycophants. He's actually reaching out to people who weren't necessarily with him all along um, and, and hopefully looking for diversity of opinion in his foreign policy team. Um, can, can I add not only yes. diversity of opinion, but sheer diversity? Yeah, I mean. I mean, look at the three who were named or, you know, or at least floated, two <laughs> named and floated. Two and a half. Nikki Haley, um, Betsy DeVos, and, and uh, Ben Carson, an right. African-American, two females and, and, and one with an pseudo-immigrant past parents, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. parents, yeah, yeah. Parents so, so, so the two things that they, the two strikes they were saying about Donald Trump was that white males elected and we, we proved that one wrong and that he had a thin skin. If you have a thin skin, you don't tap Nikki Haley, someone who is aggressively um, um, campaigning for Marco Rubio throughout the primary no, you process. No, you tap Mike Flynn, but if you have a thin skin, but I'm happy to hear that he's rounding out his foreign policy team. I, I certainly hope he chooses Mitt Romney. Who um, I share. Interesting. I do. Secretary of State. A Secretary yeah. of State. I share his concern okay, about. Yeah. I share his concern about Russia, and so I'm happy to hear that hopefully he'll be considered a Secretary of State. Yeah, I just say at 44 years old, if I'm her career counselor, this is the best thing that ever happened to her. Uh, number two, I think that Rick Grinnell also would have been pretty I strong. I was just going to say that. So yep. that would have been that would have been an excellent choice Fantastic. too. Uh, but I do think that Nikki Haley is going to be great. And by the way, it's just very hard for Donald Trump to find someone who is critical of him. That's the problem because, I'm being sarcastic, he had so many critics right. and so many sides, and he has no, he does not care. I mean, my goodness, he went to see the New York Times yesterday. Everyone there is a critic. So I think it's going to be very interesting to see, I think more pressure on Nikki Haley to go along with Donald Trump than Donald Trump to go over with Nikki Haley because she's got to do what his policies say. That is a for sure. And I hope they do find a great position for Rick Grinnell because he's a real asset to the party. All right, we are still waiting for word on the Secretary of State position and whether it will go to Mitt Romney, like we were just mentioning. Now, Romney does not, as you may have been aware if you watch this channel, which I hope you do, Newt Gingrich and Mike Huckabee's vote. Take a listen. I would be concerned, one, I think uh, the vast majority of Trump's supporters uh, will initially be very unhappy and will be reminded of all the things that Romney said yeah. over the year. And two, because Romney does represent a very different viewpoint, I mean, uh, and authentically, uh, I'm not sure whose Secretary of State he would be. I'm still very unhappy that Mitt did everything he could to derail Donald Trump. There's only one way that I think Mitt Romney could even be considered for a post like that, and that is that he goes to a microphone in a very public place and repudiates everything he said in that famous Salt Lake City speech and everything he said after that. Okay, Dana, so your thoughts on that, the two uh, well, opinions. Well, again, I would say that if you are up for a possible cabinet position or somewhere in the government, it's probably smart not to be on television at the moment and just let that process play out um, because they don't get to decide. They can advise and they can comment and they can advise through the media if they want, but Donald Trump gets to decide mm -hmm. and he may or may not choose Mitt Romney. I don't know, but I think that in some ways when you're publicly pressured like that, it makes you want to do it more. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. All right. So, Eric, we know, Julia, I got your opinion on this, so that was good. But I don't do like think? him for Secretary of State. Everyone else in the world seems to like him for Secretary of State, and, and, and for the reasons that uh, both Huckabee and Newt said, look, Donald Trump was elected by people who love Donald Trump, who love Donald Trump's vision. Mitt Romney never had that. I do think Mitt is talented. He's smart. I remember back when he was tapped to fix the Olympics, and, sure. and remember that was that was where he uh, excelled. So, what's the most broke, like possibly the most broken system in in government right now? It's the VA. Mm -hmm. Have Mitt go and turn that thing around. Get in there and shake that place up. Break mm -hmm. some unions. You know, bust some unions up. Um, start start offering some of the things that Donald Trump promised, where um, veterans get. Uh, vouchers. I know. For, I don't think he has the, the right uh, background experience for veterans, and I also don't think he's being strongly considered for that, to be honest with you, because I do know who is. Go uh, ahead, Brian. Here's the problem for Mitt Romney. Uh, David Petraeus, in an interview with the BBC, uh, with an interview with the BBC yesterday, said, "If I'm asked, I'll serve." And my goodness, if you want a guy that's uh, really motivated to change his reputation back to where it was, which is off the charts great, it is David Petraeus. He's got a lot of international experience. He's got a lot of contacts. He understands what it means to go to war. He understands what it means to be a diplomat. He understands how to work the media. Yep. And he also understands what it takes to follow orders. And the fact that he told the BBC that if asked, I would do it, and he, twice he answered again. And the fact that General Keene was offered the job, uh, was offered the defense job, but he had a chance to talk to Trump afterwards for quite a long time. I'm sure he said, hey, the guy I mentored, David Petraeus, you've got to keep him in mind. He'll be great for you. So that might be the greatest threat. You know what's interesting about Petraeus, though, and I, I sincerely mean this, this is not a snarky comment by, by a liberal, 
is, <laughs> I'm sorry, usually Thanks my for comment. The Thanks, but <laughs> David Petraeus, right or wrong, has some of the problems that a lot of the Trump people castigated Hillary Clinton for. Yep. And when you empower David Petraeus for the same job that Hillary Clinton had, who has the same problems that Hillary Clinton had, what does that say about how genuine you were about Hillary? You're not wrong to say that, but I would say the magnitude of the two is very different. There's one guy with a little legitimately a war record that will go down in history, uh, uh, in military history. Well, so paid for his... And Prime. paid for it uh, big time, and you know we made a huge mistake as head of the CIA, which was the wrong place for him anyway. Not to excuse it, but if he goes through the vetting process and goes through the uh, and goes through the Senate, I think that he's a guy uh, could join the club. Not perfect. Yeah, but interesting Julie's comments too about Mitt Romney because he is somebody who is very capable. Just in general, for some kind yeah. of appointment, it sounds Listen, like if, if, your if, team would approve. What, it's not that my team would approve, but I'd be oh, very no, curious. Just well, just yeah, but, but, but let well, me just finish my thought though. What's interesting to me is that Trump has such close connections to Russia, whether through people that potentially finance his operation, the fact that his son met in France last year. Uh, or earlier this year, I'm sorry, with, with a bunch of Putin people in Syria. And to have somebody who's such a hawk on Russia, which I love, be his Secretary of State would be incredibly fascinating Romney. to me. Romney, Romney would be incredibly fascinating, yeah, fascinating but, to me. But also, look, what, look at the problems you get into. Well, look, look, Hillary Clinton worked directly with President Obama on their Benghazi strategy, worked together with them on the Iran strategy. And look how it turned out. I, I don't, I, Mitt Romney doesn't see anywhere near eye to eye with with. with Donald Trump's vision of, of foreign policy anywhere. Would you anywhere put him someplace world. else besides That's the VA? That's what I said. Besides, VA? give me another well, one. Well, I don't know, but I just don't want to. See, I wouldn't want to see him representing the, the President Donald Trump's vision of, of, of foreign policy. The guy's not, a non-interventionist. Are you going to send Mitt Romney and keep in mind that dad always around said, the world? His dad always gave him advice: whatever you do, don't serve in a Kazakh cabinet official for a president. He hated it when he served for Nixon. He's used to being in charge of CEO and a former governor. But as Secretary of State, you kind of do your own thing. That would be a little bit different. Well, it'd be more. Yeah, it would be more interesting. But you can't show any daylight between the president and the Secretary of State. I know, but the no, but I think that there would be, and I do. I actually right. think that they think of this more as a business arrangement yeah. than anything personal. You want to get stuff done. She's the best Thanks people. So. Hey, put him at yeah. Treasury. The guy knows money inside now. That's what I'm saying. There you go. All right, we've solved all the problems, so now we're just going to go to commercial <laughs> break till special report. <laughs> just kidding. He started out his presidency, pretty much the first words out of his mouth were, I want to be a president for all races and religions. Brian Lanza put out a statement last night denouncing all racism on behalf of the administration, as they've continually done. Today, he told the New York Times, I don't want any of this. Stop it. He looked in the camera in 60 minutes and said, cut it out. He's done this four times. If it were up to you, well, Anna, tell you what or to he the needs left, to no, do let me finish. If it were up to you, Anna, or the leftist, he would spend every day of his presidency standing on top of Trump Tower with a megaphone saying, I am not a racist, but he's not going to do that. He's done it four times already. He's going to work for the American people, and he's not going to be baited into these traps you are trying to lay and the left are trying to lay. Can I say I'm not, Anna, no, listen, Anna, it's not, Anna, it's Anna, not up to me. Let, me. let me tell you something that probably doesn't happen to you. I get stopped by children who are afraid of going mm -hmm, to school. Mm -hmm, I get stopped yes. by Muslims who are afraid of going out in the street and having the scarves torn off their heads. I don't care That's what he does. If he doesn't politics. want to succeed as the president of the United States, that's perfect. If he wants to unite this country, he should use yes. the bully pulpit he has now as president of the and United Anna, States I, to he, give I a hope, unity I hope, Anna, that you, I hope, he is responsible I hope you are for unleashing the Kraken. He is responsible for legitimizing and empowering Kill the Anna, races that are out I hope there. You it are. is not a coincidence they are celebrating Anna, his victory. I hope you are responsible when you answer those children and you say to them, do not fear. Donald Trump has said the first thing out of his words in his presidency, I want to be a president for all races and religions. He's denounced racism. Favor. Don't, he please wants don't. To try Do me a favor and don't lecture me on responsibility. That I when you take a listen, Kelly, when you're standing in front of a dream so act John, kid who's so John, afraid I'm of getting deported, when you're getting, when you're standing in front of a U.S. citizen kid who's afraid his parents are going to get deported, when you're standing in front of an eight-year-old girl who's afraid that her U.S. citizen Hispanic parents are going to be discriminated and deported, do not lecture me on responsibility. I hope you tell them to listen to President Obama. On President responsibility. Obama. President I am Obama. not President of the United States.